Hi, this is Dr. Nurs in my dining room next to the picture of Abraham Lincoln that you've seen all semester. Hopefully these will be the last, there he is. Um, this, hopefully this will be the last um, video boost. We really need a boost because we're kind of behind schedule, to put it lightly. Um, there are things I have to finish this week and um, I'm going to try to do a combination of class tomorrow and a couple of little boosts. One thing that I've been asked a lot about is the stereochemistry of reactions. Okay, and it's really not that complicated. Um, I think people think it's really complicated, but it's not that complicated. So basically, any reaction where you make a carbocation or a radical, you need to evaluate the products made. Okay? And establish if you made stereo centers. I hope this is readable. I should say um, asymmetric carbons. in the process. If so, draw all permutations. Okay, and this is what we've been saying all along. Okay, so for example, I'm just going to give one example. If um, I was adding uh, HBr to this, and I'm using simple examples, but if I were using adding HBr with peroxides, okay, what I would get out of this in a flat sense, you know, just drawing a flat structure is this. In doing this chemistry, we have made two stereocenters, because the Br goes to the less substituted side and the H goes to the more substituted side. So in this case, you would evaluate how many asymmetric carbons you made, this is a free radical reaction, and you would draw all permutations. And what that means is you would draw this plus mi, which means mirror image, and this, this diastereomer plus mi. Okay? Now, if there were a pre-existing asymmetric carbon in the molecule, so for example, if there was already an asymmetric carbon in the molecule here, this is an R center, I believe, that center would still exist in all your products. So these would no longer be MIs. These would be diastereomers because the pre-existing center does not change as a result of the chemistry. Okay, so you would, you would have to actually draw them all out. So if there's a pre-existing center, you have to keep that in there, and you can't write MI, because if you draw MI of these, you're going you're gonna to invert that center. I don't know if that makes sense, okay? So then, there are reactions. So that's what you do with radicals and cations. So that would take care of, like, HX... H3O plus and HBr with peroxides. That's three of them. Okay, then there are two reactions that are anti additions. And one is X2 and the other is X2 with water. Okay, um, if I were looking at this particular compound, again, I'll do it without the pre existing center first. If I were adding X2 to this molecule, I would once again make two stereocenters, okay? What would happen is that I would get two anti-additions of bromine, for example, or X. We could just say X here. X, X would be like bromine. And the methyl group would get popped up like that. Or I would get 
this. Okay, now this is if I'm taking this compound with the double bond and the methyl. If I add X2 to it, I'm only going to get two compounds because there are only two ways to add anti, as I've said many times. This way and this way, that's it. And since it's only adding anti, you only get two compounds and their relationship is that they are enantiomers. However, if there was a pre-existing asymmetric carbon on the molecule, these would no longer be enantiomers and they would be diastereomers and you'd really have to write both of them out, okay? This is also true of the addition of X2 in water, okay? If you're adding X2 in water, the X would be here, sorry, the X would be here and the OH would, would be here. So if I change this reaction and I added X2 and H2O, this is the beauty of having a marker board, okay, I can change things very quickly and you guys can stop it and look at it. Remember, these are kind of like home movies, they're not perfect, but we're covering the stuff. So if I, did, if I added X2 in water, X would go here and OH would go here. These are normally uh, regioselective. They're not the most regioselective reactions, but they're normally regioselective. So I would get this X here, this OH here. They would be anti. There would only be two, two products for that, and the two products would be enantiomers of each other, provided there was no pre-existing center. They're enantiomers now, okay? If I put this methyl on, which I'm just using as a marker, these would be diastereomers of each other and you'd have to show them. Okay, um, there are two reactions that are syn, syn additions. One is B2H6 with, um, followed by peroxides and base. That's, that's um, hydroboration. And the other one is just adding H2. Okay, if I were adding H2, H2 with palladium, on carbon. If I were adding H2 to this, maybe I've got to change it up a little bit to make it a little more interesting, but um, if I'm adding H2 to this, let's say I put two groups on here that are different, okay, so it's a little more interesting. Um, if I'm doing a syn addition on this, all this means is that the two hydrogens are normally coming in on the same face, and there's only two ways to add syn. So if it's a syn addition, you only get enantiomers, okay? So, normally. So if the two H's are coming in from the same face, that would mean I'd have this, and this. It's really not that complicated. I'm kind of doing the same thing over and over again. I hope it's starting to make sense. Okay, I get that and that, and they would be enantiomers. Now, I, I added these groups to make it chiral. Okay, if there was that pre-existing center on it, what would these be now? They would no longer be enantiomers. They'd be diastereomers. All right, and that's kind of it in a nutshell. Okay, so cations and radicals, you get everything. Hi, um, also, oxymercuration, you get everything. Um, these two anti-additions... These are syn additions, okay? Syn additions are limited in what you get, okay? So I'm, the next video is going to be on solvents in SN2 reactions, etc. all those reactions. How long was it?